If you can believe it, Sherlock Holmes has been a prominent member of the video games industry for a good 20 years now, and I have a bit of a soft spot for him. Now part of a series of solid adventure mystery games by independent Ukrainian developer Frogwares, Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 follows a young Holmes and his partner John as they uncover the circumstances regarding their mother's death. But naturally, not everything goes as planned in the rather beautiful Mediterranean shores of Cardona, and it's up to you to guide our younger, bolder, and perhaps a bit naive detective through vandalism, theft, and murder. This is Frogware's second open world title following the Sinking City, and a first for the Sherlock games, although the core identity stays fairly the same. Sherlock Holmes is all about investigating cases and solving them, with the primary mystery being the story of what happened to Holmes and John's mother. The mystery unravels as the player picks up the detective's memory and solves other cases that are directly and indirectly tied to the arcing narrative. Numerous investigations are introduced to the player through cutscenes, digging through items, or even just overhearing a conversation in the open world. Now pull up a seat and grab a cup of finely grounded cave. For Sherry's largest adventure yet, you'll certainly need it. In a typical case, players will guide Holmes through the ropes of questioning, examining, analyzing, and formulating conclusions for a given incident. All gathered clues are placed into the journal, where they can be examined further or used as a basis for questioning within key suspects and witnesses. Some items may also be chemically analyzed, which is done through a small minigame that involves a bit of math work, but nothing terribly difficult, and these can also be skipped if necessary. And while most evidence is collected on the scene, some will require fooling people with disguises, eavesdropping on unsuspecting gossipers, and combat. Going through the motions is quite fun, especially if you're the type to examine anything and everything. Each case, from the smaller to the larger ones, are bespoke, and do not always require the use of all of home skills or in the same order of things. This is one aspect of the open world I really liked. I could just leave whatever I was doing and come back when I had my head in order. As I mentioned earlier, the open world is the biggest change for the series. The games were previously level based and featured long rides and carriages between areas. Now, Sherlock can run from one end of Cardona to another, taking in all the sites of Ottoman culture to spots of Greek and British influence. And I did really love the world design, artistically, musically, and the layout. But I was also impressed with the number of NPCs that litter the streets depending on the time of day and area. Considering the size of Frogwares, I was quite impressed. Although animations for characters do leave much to be desired. The model work is there, it's just a bit of a shame that they can't quite hit those high notes yet. But on that note, I was also left unsatisfied with the open world. This is because, for all the gameplay mechanics players will be engaging with, the city really isn't one of them. Sure, there may be shops or pretty sights, but once I unlocked a good number of fast travel points, I stopped running through the streets in favor of simply hopping all over the place. Frankly speaking, if you remove the open world and cut the cases up into levels, nothing would change. There's no engagement to be had with running to every single destination, because nothing dynamic happens. They almost feel like loading screens you have to engage with instead. Combat also falls short of the mark. Holmes is equipped with a revolver to fight enemies that would dare to fight back, and trust me there are plenty that do. Fighting will usually take place in a closed off area set up for battle, and you'll know when you're in one thanks to the arcadey intros that play. Now this sounds typical, but Sherlock is no killer, and killing has its consequences, which means that the player will instead need to attack the baddie's weak point and run up for an arrest. This is where things get very frustrating very quickly. Sometimes you just can't quite hit the enemy's weak spot, and other times Sherlock will be stun locked till he's all red. This all being said, don't expect Gears of War from these sections, and you'll be just fine. While these fighting encounters aren't too common, and yes, they can be disabled, I simply don't think these options make up for the clunky nature of the combat. Also, combat is a good source of income, which you do need to purchase disguises and furniture for Sherlock's old abode, so skipping them all might not be the best of ideas. Playing a young Sherlock has been quite the entertaining endeavor. I was a little worried at first about the direction Frogwares would take with the naive Holmes, but I was quite pleased with the results. His comebacks are wittier than ever, and he's not afraid to shut someone down if it disinterests him. His partner, non-John Watson, but a John, plays a role in ensuring the better side of Sherlock comes out and is not afraid to criticize. Whether it's how the player has Holmes talk to people, or how many times you have him get a deduction wrong, he has plenty to write about you. John also has plenty of things to say as well, between serious matters and the occasional video game reference, he's the best partner one could have. And unlike Watson, he has a reason for being able to teleport. The city of Cardona and its citizens have plenty to tell you about Sherlock's brief but former homeland, and you learn more naturally as you progress through cases and discover some terrible secrets of the victims and the suspects you encounter. Some of these involve pretty heavy subjects, like sexual assault and rape, but I feel the game does a good job of handling these subjects in the proper fashion. At the end of many of the investigations, the player is given a choice on how to handle the verdicts of the suspects Holmes can accuse. There are a lot of grey areas, and no matter what choice you go with, Holmes will bend the accused and the deduction to his will. 
but this is perhaps my favorite part of the game, because you can see how Sherlock is shaped by his case solving in ways that even he does not suspect. Really, if you had to pick up a narrative driven game, I would easily recommend this one, as it's the very highlight of the game. Although if I had to say one thing, don't expect the world from the voice acting. In terms of accessibility, Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 features a few options to customize investigation and combat gameplay, with the ability to turn the ladder off completely. Subtitle support, language, and aim assist functions can also be adjusted. However, controls cannot be customized. Players looking to do so should consider making a custom controller profile in the console settings. Now in conclusion, Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1 is perhaps my favorite Frogwares title. By expanding and spacing out the objectives at the player's leisure, it creates an open-ended feeling of choice that had me coming back. The writing and overall narrative was paced well and did not overindulge me with useless information, nor did cases drag on longer than they needed to, and though I know I spoke negatively about the city, I don't think going open world was a bad choice at all. I hope that Frogwares can figure out how to make it more engaging and iron out the combat to a less clunky standard while also encouraging pacifism. With all of the above being said, this is perhaps Sherlock Holmes' best adventure yet.